Hello everybody. Uh, so we are starting the mass transfer course now. Um, and as I said, I'm, we're going to start with the chapter 22 in the textbook. Uh, but I, I, I like to start with uh, an introduction, which I believe is a very, very important introduction because it, uh, it focuses on some concepts that are necessary to be well understood and grasped before we go ahead and um, talk about the, the main content of the course. Um, and this uh, this co uh, concept is uh, the meaning of the word mass transfer. So um, um, some of the audiences might be aware with this term and understand what it means and what it implies, but some other might not be familiar with this word. So um, I'd like in this video to uh, uh, focus on, on the meaning of the word mass transfer and some of the consequences of the understanding of this term. And I believe this is this is um, pretty important, and uh, will 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 make some of the concepts clear that we will build on in the coming uh, videos, inshallah. So um, the the word mass transfer it means from from its name we know from heat transfer it's the transfer of heat from one point to another. The uh, momentum transfer is the transfer of momentum or fluid from one point to another. So it's it's kind of similar. So it's the transfer of mass from one point to another. So this is the the what the name implies. Um, but actually, there are more details that are included in this name uh, or the or, or in this term that I want to highlight. Uh, but before we talk about this, I want to uh, take a simple example that we are very familiar with so that it makes the concept easier for us to understand. And this is the heat transfer. Heat transfer is a thing that we all uh, have been exposed to since we were little kids. Um, this, this is an example of the heat transfer. We have here a metal rod and this metal rod, one, one side of it is put in the fire. Um, it's, it's red hot, it's very, very, very hot. And the other side is held with like a tool. Um, and one question that is, is very, or its answer is very simple is why is it held with uh, with a root why why is not the person holding it with his own hand and the answer the logical answer is that he's, he's gonna burn his hand if he touches it um, and the reason he's gonna gonna burn his head uh, his hand despite this part is not put in the fire is that heat will transfer from here to here um, through the, the the metal rod and this is how heat transfers it transfers from the high temperature to the low temperature uh, and this this is very very logical and intuitive. Uh, the uh, other point that I want to make, which is also related to heat transfer, is the difference between these two photos. So in these two photos, in the left photo, we see a person holding a hot cup of tea or coffee with his hands, and he's holding it tightly. Um, he seems he's cold, and he wants to make his hands warm, so he is holding the the cup uh, tightly. The other side, we have a person. Um, uh, who is uh, holding a pan and the pan is very very hot so he, he like, um, uh, uh, leaves it from his hand he, he leaves the pan and the question is what's the difference between these two photos in these two photos it's the same hand the same person um, will, will be holding this cup and the same person cannot stand the uh, the temperature or the the, uh, the hot pan and the reason is uh, the, the 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 average temperature of human body is around 37 so his his hand is around 37 degrees this cup is 70 degrees let's say 80 degrees so the difference is 30 to 40 degrees celsius so it's not a very big difference in temperature but in this case we have a huge temperature difference this pan might be 150 degrees or so so you have almost 120 degrees celsius difference in temperature so what happens when you have a very big temperature difference is that the rate of transfer of heat is going to be very very high uh, while here the rate of transfer of heat is not going to be high it's exactly like when you have um, uh, like a flow of water that's going with very high pressure uh, if, if it's an extremely high pressure you cannot stand in front of it but you can uh, you can stay under the the shower. Uh, the water is going. It's not high pressure, so you can you can uh, stay stay without being hurt. So this is the th the same thing. Either in fluid mechanics, either in, in heat transfer. If you have high driving force, you will have high rate 
uh, if you have low driving force, you will have low rate of transfer regarding whatever uh, thing you are talking about. So this is a general rule. You can apply it to anything. The, the rate is directly proportional to the driving force. And the flux is the rate per, per, normal, per unit normal area. So the flux is directly proportional to the driving force divided by the normal area. Um, this is applicable to anything, even for for the the uh, electric circuits. We we know that the the uh, voltage uh, or the current equals voltage divided by the resistance. So voltage or, or the current is directly proportional to the voltage or the driving force, which is the potential difference in the case of electricity. So it's it's a general uh, law that you can apply to anything, and you can convert this into a form of an equality by putting the constant of, of, of uh, proportionality, which is, we usually like to put it in the form of 1 over resistance. Uh, for those who took the, the uh, heat transfer course before, you know that we, we have done this before when we have convection, conduction, convection. It, it, it's, uh, you can put this as, uh, as an electric circuit. So this is something that we, we like to, to put so that it, it fits with the electric circuit uh, well. Um, and the same for flux. So this is a general form. Um, and this applies to everything, including the mass transfer as well. So we have seen this before in fluid mechanics and Bernoulli equation. We have the velocity that represents the flow, because if you multiply the velocity by the area, it's going to be the flow rate. So this can, for, for like to some extent, uh, represents the difference in the uh, flow in and out, so it's the total flow rate. So this is equals to the, uh, or, or directly proportional to difference in height, which is a form of a pressure difference. And this is the difference in pressure as well. So this is directly proportional to the driving force in this case. The same in heat transfer, the Q, which is the, the heat transfer flux, is directly proportional to the delta T um, in, in this case. And uh, this is this is not right. There is no area here, um, and it's directly proportional to the, uh, the the delta T here. And for radiation, it's directly proportional to T power four minus T power four, which is still uh, a driving force. In mass transfer, it is directly proportional to uh, the difference in concentration or difference in partial pressure. So this is this is. Uh, how there are some similarities and how the, the same rule applies to uh, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, and mass transfer. And that's why the three are called the transport phenomena. Um, and this is why, like the, the textbook we are using, it's, it's uh, momentum, heat, and mass transfer because they are similar um, to like very, very uh, like large extent in many, in many forms. So this is one form where they are similar. Um, so now let's go back to mass transfer. Again, we said that mass transfer describes the transport of mass from one point to another. Uh, but here comes a question. Um, in, in fluid mechanics, we have been studying the, the transport of fluids from a place to another. And we have studied the transport of, let's say, any, any fluid, let's say water from one point to another. And I can calculate precisely how the flow will go and how the pressure will change and how the uh, pressure outlet will be, the velocity of the flow, the, the flow rate, the losses and everything. And um, I, uh, we, we, we calculated this for open channels, for closed channels. We know, we know how to calculate the fluid flow very, very precisely for many cases. And this is a transport of mass. I have a mass that's going from here to there. So this is a mass transfer. This is one thing that people might think. But this is, this is not true uh, because the, what we say is concerned with the transfer of the whole flow from a point to another. And this is the focus of the fluid mechanics. In fluid mechanics, we never ever thought of how the composition of this flow changing, changes from the point one to point two. I've never thought of this, and I've never uh, thought of how I uh, I can change the concentration from a point to another. Uh, if I have, for instance, a mixture of benzene and toluene that is flowing from one point to another, 
I deal with them as a whole. Uh, I, I, I never think of any change of the concentration between the two points. Uh, the only like instance where uh, when I, 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 I consider the, the compositions is if I want to calculate the physical properties, the densities, the viscosity of the mixture, then I can take into account the mole fractions or the mass fractions just to get the average value of the uh, physical properties. But I, I don't think of any change in the physical property or, or, or in the concentrations in fluid mechanics. In mass transfer, it is uh, it, it's a concern. It's the, the, the main concern of mass transfer is the transfer of a species from one point to another. And that's why this is the basis of all the separation processes, like distillation, like absorption, like stripping, uh, adsorption, membranes, any liquid-liquid uh, extraction, solid-liquid extraction, all of these are concerned with the transport of a species from a point to another. In case of absorption, I have a gas phase and liquid phase, and only one species is going from the gas phase to the liquid phase. This is not fluid mechanics. This is pure mass transfer. So this is, this is the big difference between the mass transfer and the fluid mechanics. Um, so... Uh, this is one thing. The other thing is that mass transfer, in many cases, takes place in single phase. Uh, I mean, um, in, uh, it, in, in, in cases, it takes place in single phase, but in most of the cases, it takes place in multi-phase systems over the boundaries. Uh, and this is this is this is the case for for many many systems, as I said, the distillation, absorption, stripping, uh, adsorption, membranes. All of these are multi-phase systems. Uh, and in this case, as we said, that we always say that the flux or the rate of the transfer is directly proportional to the driving force. Here, the driving force is going to be very, very, very tricky. Uh, and the reason it's tricky, uh, let's let's take a look at the the other cases that we we know, uh, the the other two uh, transport phenomena, which are the mass transfer and heat transfer. In mass transfer, the uh, the the fluid mechanics. I'm sorry, the fluid mechanics. The uh, driving force is the difference in pressure mainly and in uh, heat transfer it's difference in temperature so let's say um, I have a cup of tea like this and I leave it in a room for a week and then I come back even without thinking of this I would know that the temperature of this cup would be equal to the temperature of the room and this is the equilibrium state this is when there is no heat transfer when the temperatures are equal. The same for these two, if you have high pressure and low pressure, and if you leave them to reach equilibrium, then the equilibrium will be reached when the pressure here equals the pressure here. So this is very, very intuitive, very, very simple. It doesn't need an engineer to tell this. It's any anybody's logic will tell this. Uh, the same is applied for mass transfer. Let's say I'm sitting in the room and I spray a perfume in this corner of the room and I close the room come after a week, I will find that the concentration of this perfume is the same all over the room. So it's it's simple. It's the concentration is is is, uh, is the driving force and then it reaches the, the state where the concentration is constant. But this is not the case for multi-phase system. Um, it might be simple in case of mass transfer if I'm dealing with one phase, but if I'm dealing with multi-phases, like as I said, in absorption, in adsorption, in any other cases, uh, you will have a problem now. It's not a problem, but a challenge. You can call it a challenge to be uh, like a better better word. Um, and this challenge is that uh, for heat transfer, uh, heat was transferred from the cup, the hot cup, which is a liquid phase, to air, which is a cold air. And the units of, temp of, of temperature is the same. I, I don't have different units for the heat to, to, to measure the temperature here, and they're both in Celsius or Kelvin. Um, the same for, for the, 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 the like if, if you have, uh, uh, let's say, a wall that's hot wall that's giving temperature to, to a cold fluid, then it's the same. The equilibrium will be reached when the temperature equals the temperature, regardless then the phases that you are dealing with. It doesn't make any difference. But in mass transfer, it is a big difference. It's a huge difference because now I'm I'm trying to find uh, or I, I I want to know what is the equilibrium for two phases that deal with different units or I, I use different units to represent the concentrations. 
So this is a big problem here or a big, a big challenge because I cannot say that I will reach equilibrium when the partial pressure of the gas or the species in the gas phase equal the concentration in the liquid phase. It's, it's, it's not logical and it's not right. Uh, I cannot say that the partial pressure in the gas phase equal the concentration of the species in the adsorbent. It's not right as well. So uh, there is something missing here. And this missing thing is that we need to define the equilibrium, which is something that we didn't need to do before because it was very logical, very intuitive, and it didn't need any mathematical way to represent it. It's already represented in the difference in temperature. But here, uh, we, we don't have this, uh, this simple case. We have a more complex case. And this is why in mass transfer, we deal a lot with a new type of equations, which is called the equilibrium relation. And this is a relation that's used to tell us what is the equilibrium case. When will mass transfer stop? Uh, at what concentration and pressure the mass transfer will stop? Or the two phases will reach equilibrium where no more mass transfer is going to take place. So this is, this is an important thing that we have to keep in mind. And this is what we saw a lot if you saw the, the, the videos of the... Uh, absorption or distillation or stripping or any of these mass transfer operations, we always had to deal with uh, operating or, or the, the equations that represent the mass, the, 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 the mass transfer and the equations that represent the equilibrium relation. This is an important, a very, very important equation that we need to uh, keep in mind and we use a lot due to the nature of this process or this type of uh, of uh, transfer phenomena or transport phenomena, which is different in this specific part from heat transfer and fluid mechanics. So I'll end up with this uh, thing. Uh, it's an important point, so I, I hope it's clear for you. And we will continue in the next uh, video. Inshallah.